Hello students, this is Taranam Jahan and I'm here to begin with a new chapter from your history. And I hope you people are able to understand the slides, whatever have been given to you and you people are taking it seriously and answering all the questions which have been given to you. So let's start with a new chapter again from the history. So here we are going to take the chapter from both the Viva Education and the NCRT as the contents are same whichever the extra content will be given will be discussed by us. So with this we will be completing the chapter from both the books that is your Viva Education and NCRT. In the Viva Education this chapter has been given by the name called Revolt of 1857 and in your NCRT the title has been given as When the People Rebel 1857 and After the Math. This is the chapter 5 of your NCRT in the 6th chapter of your Viva Education. So let's begin from uh, with this chapter, the class 8, the 5th and 6th chapter from your history, from both the books. So under this chapter, we are going to study about the actions taken by the Indians on the Britishers, on their harsh and the rude behavior. Their harsh and rude policies which were affecting the Indians, they were so rude that they, uh, these people, the Indians, they had, uh, they had a rebel on the Britishers. They had taken the actions because of the policies which were made by the Britishers and they were forced to change the policies. So what were the rebel, what were the policies, each and everything we are going to discuss under this chapter. So let's begin with the policies and the people. The policies of the companies were affecting both all the king, queen, peasants and the sepoys irrespective of the fact about the status whether the person is a king or a peasant the policies were affecting everyone. So let's see how the policies were affecting the kings, peasants and sepoys. Now let's see how the Nawab has lost their power. The power and the authority of the king started diminishing due to the policies of the Britishers, such as appointing of the resident, doctrine of lapse, subsidiary alliances. These were the policies which were made by the Britishers. Now, according to the resident policy, which was brought, this concept was brought by the Lord Winsley. He, according to this policy, the Britishers agents who works under the Indian king or the courts can have a right to interfere in the personal matter. According to the policy, they can interfere in the personal matter of the king and the queens. Then, according to the doctrine of lapse, which was brought, this concept was brought by Dalhousie. And according to him, the king, whoever don't have the legal hire, the territory of those kings and the queens will be taken away by the Britishers. Now, these were the policies which were affecting the rule of the kings, queens and nawabs. Apart from this, Apart from this, many Lawab lost their territories. And if we talk about the 1801, that is about Awadh, half of the territory was taken away by the Britishers. Kings were not able to pay the British army, the subsidiary alliances as per the rule, as per the policies. Again in 1856, Lord Dalhousie, he just played a game on the, the Nawab of Awadh and he said that there is a misgovernment in the award and we will be obliged to take over the complete award under our power and we'll look after the people of the awards and apart from all these things they even did one more thing earlier whatever coins were made by the britishers they removed the images of the king from the coins as you know that whatever the coins were there during that period uh, whichever dynasty is having the king those king uh, uh, picture will be engraved on that coins but here what Britishers did they started removing the uh, images of the kings from the coins and they started engraving it their pictures on the coins and as it was very compulsory to have the pictures the engraved pictures of the kings on the coins so this shows that the power of the Indian kings were diminishing and but there were certain kings and queens who came forward not only these things, uh, there were certain king and queen, they uh, said that we should negotiate about these matters, about the policies to be the Britishers, we should have a word with the Britishers that these policies are very harsh, whether you have to change the policies, uh, so it should not be so hard and rude. So many kings and queens, they came forward to negotiate with the Britishers, uh, like uh, the Rani Jhansi Bhai and Nana Sahib, uh, Nahana Sahib, 
all the, uh, these both the people they were not having their own hire they were not having their uh, uh, natural kid or a natural child uh, the child were adopted one like rani jhansi was having the son who was adopted and the nana sahab was having a adopted son call as peshwa bajirao too and both were affected by the doctrine of lapse because of this uh, doctrine of lapse they have to lose their territory so they said that let's have a word with the britishers so that uh, will make uh, to make such changes in the policy because these are the policies which are very hard and rude and with uh, because of this policy we are uh, losing our territory so please uh, just uh, make it it quite uh, changes in the policies but uh, these negotiation with the britishers failed so these were the things which were suffered by the nawabs as you can say that this can be a political cause nawab lose their power or a political cause whichever way it can be asked you have to write the same answer how the nawabs were affected and this is also called as the political cause now let's see how the peasants and the sepoys were affected by the policies which were made by the britishers peasants were burdened with the heavy taxes as you have have read about this rotwari system mahalwari system permanent system these were the systems which were affecting the peasants with the heavy taxes lands were taken away from them due to the non payment of the taxes so these people were suffering because of the heavy taxes which were made as per the policies by the britishers then comes the how the sepoys were affected sepoys were unhappy with the salaries and the allowances which were paid by the britishers then the sepoys were forced to follow the rules which were against the religious belief that is in 1824 burma now myanmar there was a war going on there and the britishers wanted that the indian sepoys should participate in this but the problem was to reach burma they have to cross the sea during the period during that period india believed that if we cross the sea they will be away from the religious beliefs and they refused to go to, through the sea but they even said that they can go through the land route but the britishers got very angry as they said no by going through the sea route and they punished them very severely for that then again in 1856 they made a rule that the indian sepoys should sign a document that they will cross the sea or any road to work for the britishers now who are the sepoys they came from the one or the other peasant family so in other case you can say that these were the peasants who were suffering the same sepoys so here these were the sufferings which were made by the peasants and the sepoys now let's see the response to the reforms britishers they prohibited sati system and passed a widow remarried act now because of which the indian thought that they are interfering in our religion then after 1830 christian missionaries could own land in india they are taking the land from the peasants here and they are grabbing the territory from the indians that is the kings Uh, but if any outsider is coming they are giving the line to them because they are the christian missionaries so again this was against the indian rule that they are taking their own land and giving to some other person then convert could inherit their property the people those who are accepting the christianity can have their own property and the people those who are not converting to the religion uh, this christian religion they cannot have the property So, if the person leave his own religion and follow the Christianity, then he get the allowances to inherit the property. Again, this is affecting the Indians. Then many Indians believe that the Britishers are destroying their culture, because of which all of them they wanted a revolt. Now, mutiny becomes a popular rebellion. Now, as you know that the people over there, because of the Britishers, everyone was suffering. whether they are king queen sepoys peasants and civilians because of which this decided to come up with a mutiny that is nothing but rebel raising their voice all the indians they decided that they are having a common enemy let's rebel against them 
and the Britishers faced the rebel in 1857 and this was the major revolt to come out of the culture of the Britishers. From Merit to Delhi Now you see that how Sepoy's mutiny took place. See the one by one cases. The first case 29th March 1857 Mangal Pandey was hanged to death. Why he was hanged to death? Because there he was the one of the soldier and there was a news regarding him that he has attacked one of the officer of the British. On this basis he was sentenced to jail and after that he was hanged to death on 29th March 1857. Then the second case on the 9th May 1857, the same year, merit soldier who refused to accept the fat greased cartridges. They said that they are not going to use these fat greased cartridges and because of which they have rebelled against the Britishers because of which 85 sepoys were sentenced to jail for 10 years which was against their religion sentiments they were not accepting those animal fats are used in the cartridges because of this they are being sentenced to jail for the 10 years for this again the action was taken up by the soldiers that is on the very next day on the 10th may 1857 some of the soldiers were very angry when the sepoys were sent to the jail they mutinied and declared the war mutiny is nothing but rebelling coming against raising the voice they declared the war against the Firangis the, they removed all the 85 prisoners from the prison and free them after that they even robbed all the weapons of the jail and declared war against the Britishers now after declaring the war now all the sepoys after running from the jail they decided to go to Delhi. Now it is from Merit to Delhi. The sepoys gathered at the Red Fort. Proclaimed Bahadur Shah Zafar as the leader because he was the one who was sitting in the Delhi. The main Mughal emperor, the main leader who will pass the law then only each and everything will be heard by the other Nawabs and the kings. Because of which all the sepoys they gathered at the raid at this red fort and asked they have proclaimed the Bahadur Shah Zafar as the leader the last ruler of our country because of his old age he was not ready to take a part in the rebellion but he finally he accepted this all these soldiers they went to the Bahadur Shah Zafar and they said that you help us in this rebel because he is the first one, if he will ask the other kings and the Nawab to come and join this rebel and help the sepoys, all will join because he is the main leader now. He is the head in the Delhi Emperor who is sitting in the Delhi Emperor and ruling all the Nawabs. The main powers of the Nawabs are there with the, in the vested in the hands of the Bahadur Shah Zafar. So until unless he gives the order, none of the other king and queen will listen. So that is the reason why all the sepoys they went to the Bahadur Shah Zafar. But Bahadur Shah Zafar, he said that I am already in a very old age. Now I am not at all in that power that I can take the action against the powerful Britishers. So he started saying that because of my old age, I may not take part in this war. But this Sipais, this still persuaded him. And finally, Bahadur Shah Zafar agreed. Now how he agreed? Now the next important step was taken up by the Bahadur Shah Zafar. Now he wrote a letter to the other kings and requested them to form a union and let's fight against the Britishers as we are having a common enemy. So many kings and the local leaders joined because even they were suffering because of their policies and the rules. So all these people were waiting for the action. So the moment the letter came from the Bahadur Shah Zafar, all the kings, nawabs and the queens, they accepted and they, they joined this rebel. So now the British, they had not expected this to happen. They thought that the disturbance caused by the issues of the cartridges will die down. Very soon it will end up. Now they have raised a voice and soon they will keep quiet. 
but bahadur shah zafar's decision to bless the rebellion has changed the entire situation often when the people see all the alternative possibility they feel inspired and enthusiastic it gives them the courage and the hope and the confidence to act so now let's see how they reacted now the rebellion spread now the rebellion spread all over the india nana saheb came up with the idea that he will join bahadur shah and said he will work as a governor of shah and he will gather the forces against the britishers so now he came up with a new idea how to fight back with the britishers and now apart from this rani lakshmi bai even joined the rebel with tatya tope now who is tatya tope tatya tope was a general post in the nana saheb's army Many new leaders joined the revolt like Brij Khader who was the son of Awadh king Wadid Shah and the Begum Hazrat Mehal and Rani Awantika Bai of Lodi of Ramgarh with 400 soldiers she joined this rebel apart from this many other new leaders came up in order to join this rebel like Ahmadullah Shah a Malvi from Faizabad and apart from this person uh, he uh, he caught the imagination of the people and raised a huge force of support he came to lucknow to fight against the britishers in delhi a large number of ghazis or the religious warrior came together to wipe out the white people bhakt khan a soldier from bareilly took a charge of a large force of the fighter who came to delhi he became a key military leader of the rebellion in bihar an old zamindar that is kuwar singh joined the rebel of sepoys and battled with the britishers for many months leaders and the fighters come across the land and joined the fight so this was a great rebel where the small kings the small nawabs even the big kings and the big nawabs all the kings and the nawabs who were suffering due to the policies got the chance whoever got the chance they just joined this rebel and wanted to throw this white people out of india now after all this rebel when all this small and the big nawabs they came up against the britishers whether the britishers are going to keep white no the britishers are not going to keep white they are going to fight back so here the company fights back company brought many soldiers and the weapons from the british britain laws were made that whoever has come to the rebel will be punished severely in the court delhi was again recaptured by the britishers in 1857 now after the recapture of delhi the last moghal that is bahadur shah zafar and his wife zinat mehal was sent to prison of rangoon where he died in 1862 after this rani lakshmi bai was killed in 1858 and tatya tope was first escaped when he took the there he took the help of the tribes and again he joined the war but again he was captured by the britishers then they filed a case against him then he was killed in 1859 even the small kings who participated in this rebel even they were captured and the case was filed against them then, then later everyone was given the death sentence after the death of the king the britishers took control all the lost places were controlled by the britishers they tried to win back the loyalty of the landlords by offering them the rewards why they were giving them because even they participated in the rebel so by giving them the ownership of the land the britishers wanted to win their loyalty rajas nawab sepoys who rebels were hanged to death now aftermath of 1857 now the britishers they have seen the situation overall how this rebel has happened how these small people the sepoys the peasants and the kings and the nawabs they came up with the rebel where we have gone wrong so that this thing should not happen again these people should not come up with a rebel again so they came up with a new policies now they have made certain changes in their policies so that this rebel should not happen again so what were the changes which were made by the britishers 
In 1858, an act was passed where the powers will be in the hands of the crown, that is the Queen of the Britain. Now the powers are vested in the hands of the uh, the powers are not vested in the hands of the East India Company. Now it is vested in the hands of the Queen, that is uh, Elizabeth II. Then uh, many uh, members of the British cabinet was appointed as a secretary of the state of India. And he was made responsible for all the matters which is happening in the India and is answerable to the Elizabeth, that is the Queen Elizabeth, whatever is happening in the India. So this, the, again this rebel should not happen. For this, they, a, a member of British cabinet was appointed as the secretary of the state and now he will look after all the matters. Apart from this, the Governor General of India was now known as the Viceroy of India, who will be serving British people. Now, the kings were allowed to rule under the supremacy of the Queen. And even a ruling chef of the country will assure that the territory will never be taken up by the Britishers. The people, the kings or the nawabs, whoever are not having their own hire, now can have their own territory on their adopted sons too. However, they said that we are not going to interfere in your territories even if you people are not having your own hire. And they made the acknowledgement that the British queen as the sovereign paramount. Thus, the Indian rulers were to hold their kingdom as a subordinate of the British crown. So just in order to regain the power, now all these policies were changed and again in order to win the hearts of the kings, the nawabs, the queens and the peasants, now these policies were made. Now apart from those the policies which were changed by the Britishers after giving the powers, the paramount power to the crown queen, that is the Queen Elizabeth, now some more policies have been added by the Britishers, they decided that the ratio of the British soldiers will increase now in their army because the Indian soldiers who were serving Britishers came for a rebel. So now they said that there should be more British soldiers rather than the Indian soldiers in our army. And they also preferred that only Sikh, Gorkhas and Pathans will be preferred uh, as an Indian soldiers to be added in the British army. Now they decided that the people from the Bihar, Awadh and the central India will not be given any place in the British army because these were the people who came up for the rebel. So now they don't want to take a chance by again taking the people of Awadh, Bihar and the central India in the army. So now they are taking the soldiers only from the Gorkha, Sikhs and Pathans. And again one more thing they said that the land of the Muslim was taken away by the Britishers. They said that these Muslims were the main people who were the cause for the rebel. They became suspicious of the Muslim people. They started respecting Indian culture now because earlier they were interfering the Indian culture by saying that the uh, the Sati system and the remarriage of the widow system in all this way these people were interfering in the religious matter. So they said that they started respecting the Indian culture. Zamindaris were given rights over their land. So this was the new phase of the history which was started after 1857.